สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today's recipe is something called khao gang tot. Now tot means deep fry, and khao gang is a type of restaurant where you basically get a plate of rice and you can choose from a variety of different dishes like curries and stir fries and whatnot, and it'll go on top of your rice. Now you can find these restaurants in the food court on the street. Everywhere, the idea behind this appetizer is you combine the rice and that item into this bite-sized, sort of fun appetizer that'll be great for a party. So today we're making a green curry-flavored one, but you can take this idea and turn almost any of my recipe into your own little khao gang tot. Let's get started. So the rice for these rice balls is a mixture of jasmine rice and sticky rice. So we get that chewiness from the sticky rice, and it'll also help the rice balls clump together better. Three parts jasmine rice, one part sticky rice. Now this is Thai sticky rice, which is usually labeled at the store as glutinous rice or Thai sweet rice. Okay, so I am going to mix it. Rinse this rice a couple of times, and then make sure on your last rinse you really drain off all the liquid because we don't want to have too much liquid in this rice. Now I'm going to cook this rice at the ratio of one part rice to one part water, which is less than what you would normally do. But remember that sticky rice doesn't take as much water, and also we're going to be pouring a bunch of curry on top of this rice, so we really want to make sure there isn't too much moisture in there. I'm going to stick this in my rice cooker, and that's it. If you recall from my green curry episode, what we did over there to sort of intensify the green color without having to add more paste because it can get a little too spicy is we're going to make a basil puree. So I've got some coconut milk here, and I'm going to add some Thai basil leaves. I love the stick blender, and that's it. Now we've got delicious green basil juice. So I've got some coconut milk here, which I'm going to bring to a boil, and I'm going to add my green curry paste. And I'm just using store-bought paste here. If you don't want to make it too spicy, maybe two tablespoons. Or if you're not making green curry, you're using another kind of curry. It tends to be a little less spicy. You just want to get the green curry to be thick. Unlike when I make actual curry. You don't need to wait until the coconut oil breaks away from this mixture because it becomes a little bit greasy like that, and it's a little harder to form the balls when it's greasy. So now I'm gonna add my ground turkey. Normally I would use ground chicken, but I couldn't find any, so I've got ground turkey. Whatever, whatever ground meat. You don't even have to add any meat at all. But if you're not going to add the meat, I would definitely cut down on the seasoning a little bit. So it's really important. You don't have any big chunks of turkey or chicken or whatever meat you're using, because if you've got big chunks, you're gonna have a hard time forming rice balls. So now that we've got no more big chunks, a little bit of sugar to cut the salt, and some fish sauce. Now again, when you're working with store-bought curry paste, <coughs> wow, it's getting spicy in here. Um, be careful with the fish sauce. Some brands are really salty, so make sure you add maybe half of it, and then you can taste and adjust in the end. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go in with our coconut basil juice. There you go, and then bring that to a boil. I'm going to add my kefir lime leaves, which I chopped very, very finely, as finely as you can, because you don't want any big pieces. They're really chewy and fibrous. Very, very small, and that's it. Now the rice is done. I'm going to pour the curry sauce over the rice. Mm. What I'm also going to add is what I call jewel diced bell pepper. So you want to take some bell peppers and slice off a thin layer of the inner membrane, and then finely, finely dice it so you get these little jewel cuts. So it looks festive, you know, like green and red, nice and festive. But if I make these too big. They will interfere with the ball forming when we go to form the balls. In fact, anything that you add, you want it to be very, very small. That's why I'm using ground chicken. If you've seen my mango and sticky rice video, that the concept is the same. So you let the rice steep in the sauce, and the rice is going to absorb all that liquid. After a while, it will become sort of more solidified and sticky. But you want to do this. When your rice is still hot, because if it's cold, it's not going to absorb the sauce very well. 
Okay, so now taste and adjust seasoning. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Spot on. So what you want to do at this point is to really pack it. If you pack it tight now, when we go to form the balls a little bit later, once it's cool, the rice will already be quite tight together and you'll have less squeezing and forming to do. It'll be so much easier. You can just pack it right into the rice cooker if you want. I just wanted you to sort of see it better. Tight as you can. Mm. So now you want to let this cool a little bit till about room temperature. It can be a little bit warm. Once it's cold, the fat in the coconut milk will solidify a little bit. It'll be so much easier. All right, ball forming time. Now my favorite portion control tool is this disher. Okay, so I'm going to go in with one number 40 scoop, which is about a tablespoon and a half. Form these into balls. So I start with my my palm like this and press with my other finger to make sure it's really tight. And then, now that it's sort of misshapen, you gently try to nudge it into a ball. I'll give you a little tip. The bigger the balls, the less work it becomes because there's less to do. So there, so that's one rice ball. And now, you repeat. Now we're gonna coat our rice balls in breadcrumbs, but instead of doing the three-step breading, the flour, the egg, the breadcrumbs, we're just gonna do just two, where we're gonna smoosh the eggs and the flour into one. Makes it so much easier. So I've got some all-purpose flour here, and to this, I'm going to add some water and an egg. It's already beaten. To season this a little bit, because we want the coating to also be seasoned, just a touch of fish sauce and just get this mixed up into a smooth batter. At this point, you want to check to see if it's too thick. Like this is a little too thick. If I dip the rice balls, it's going to just be just, you know, smothered in all this batter. What you want is just a thin coating for your rice balls. A little bit of water. There we go. So when I lift my fork, it should just run freely like this. So here are my rice balls. You're simply going to dip and lift and let it dribble a little bit and then straight into the panko. Now note, here's a tip. Wet hand stays wet, dry hand stays dry. So my panko hand never dips inside the egg and my egg hand never goes in the panko. That is how you prevent a gunk of panko and egg on your fingers, okay? If you keep them separate, it'll be quite clean. So I've got my oil at 350 degree Fahrenheit, and it's very simple. You drop them and let them go. And these are only going to take two minutes. And the reason why these are great party appetizers is you can bread them ahead of time, keep them in the fridge, and on your party day, bring them out and fry them when you're ready to surf. Or even better, you can freeze them. So get them breaded and freeze them. Just make sure you thaw them first before you fry them because otherwise the inside will be too cold by the time the outside is done. In between batches, you want to go in and sort of get rid of these breadcrumb bits because otherwise they'll continue to burn in the oil and that's how you ruin your oil quality. So if you've got a mesh skimmer like this, Look how cute they are! Now, they are very hot right out of the fryer, so make sure you let them cool a little bit before you let your guests go at them. I know it's gonna be hard, but please, don't burn yourself. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. It's just like eating rice with green curry, but it's crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. Mmm. And the sticky rice makes it just a little bit chewier, but not too much, so it's not too heavy. Mm, so good. I promise you, you put these out, two minutes, they are gone. And they can be made in advance. They're easily reheated. They, I mean, what food could be more perfect? So the recipe, as always, is on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make these, Send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And oh, if you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so right here. And I will see you next time for your next delicious timing.